dupe. Okay, it looks pretty good. Well, hello to the future viewers as well. I've done a lot of fiddling around with the stream. Uh, so it will look a little different. Maybe it'll sound a little different. All my levels look good. So in theory, in theory, we're ready to go. Yeah, so I've got here my latest project. It's a big crab. Um, I also have a way to, in theory, read the chat from both Facebook and YouTube. So if you're tuning in from either of those, please say hi. Otherwise, we're going to chill and just do a bit of crab painting, you know? Little everyday crab painting. Still putting down kind of the base coat, you know? So, basic colors. In fact, just defining different areas of our crab so far. We're not even bothering with reasonable colors yet. Howdy, Timothy. Thanks for tuning in. Glad to know that Facebook seems to be connected right. We're going to color in some barnacles. You come just in time for the barnacles. I'm a little rusty this morning. I've also kind of uh, mixed up my whole desk space again, so I need to reconnect my brain to my arm and my arm to the drawing tablet in its new position. But well, this is a good warm-up task, just coloring between the lines. And that is pretty much all we'll do today is color between the lines. So if you're here for a nice chill coloring session, you've come to the right place. Maybe we'll do a bit of a bit more artistic stuff later on. We'll see, see how we go. Hey, Mark. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, sunny day outside here in Australia. I got two jumpers on so I can stay warm. Listening to the birds and we're just going to relax and paint some crabs. Well, just the one. Felix, it is crab. It is. It's kind of, it's getting along. It will be crab right now. It's mostly unfinished crab. Kind of want to generally work from top to bottom here. So this crab is a little experiment I'm doing this month. It's a halfway house between monster token and a battle map. It is an extra large battle map. Let me let me put a grid over it so you can demonstrate. <clears throat> and there's a bit of a grid. Yeah, so the idea is this encounter will involve jumping on his back and Avoiding this, what is that, like 30 foot guillotine claw. I think it'll be fun.
Uh, thanks for saying so, Mark. Interested to know where everyone's tuning in from. It's uh, pretty awkward timing if you're in the US, I believe. Middle of the day here, so this is my usual kind of work window. Yes, Jackson, crap. How big are these barnacles? They're about, and these are the quote unquote normal size barnacles. And when I enable my very semi-transparent grid, I can see they're about a foot in diameter. So these are pretty big barnacles all by themselves. But oh, we have some extra large barnacles too. Ah, New South Wales, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't resist a crab stream either. Let me just check OBS and make sure. Yeah, we got chat appearing. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Hey, Tara. Yeah, um, glass suit tool. That's a very viable strategy, but I've never been much of a lasso, lasso tool artist personally, much more useful for kind of vector graphics and stuff, but I just get by with my paint brushes. This guy's 600 DPI, so we got plenty of room to resize him. Yeah, he's, he's not destined to be a, a vector or be too dramatically resized. So, yeah, and lasso tool just, uh, requires a level of finesse that I do not possess. Alaska, wow. How is my voice coming through? Is it clear enough? Audio levels look fine, but I switched from Streamlabs to OBS and now all my filters are different. So in theory, I'm uh, understandable. Move over to his camouflage form. Ah, thanks. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I'm feeling good about where the stream is now. Spent some time setting up a nice overlay last night. And I now have like a permanent setup at my desk with uh, this webcam and my microphone. I used to set it up and break it down every single day I wanted to stream, but this is much, much more lightweight, so. Uh, my hope is to do at least an hour drawing every day. It's been my goal for a while now, but uh, also now incorporate streaming as well. It's a nice bit of kind of social pressure to stick to that goal as well. So that's my plan is at least an hour of artistic work every day and on stream whenever possible. And now that the stream's all set up, all that's left to do is draw. And uh, I've left this one deliberately music free. So you're encouraged to choose your own soundtrack or by all means, just mute me and listen to a podcast. 
I mean, this is definitely multitask kind of stream, I think. And this is my only my second time streaming to Facebook, so hopefully that's all working smoothly. Yesterday's stream worked pretty smoothly. I think we're done with barnacles. Yeah, ship campaign. I think at the back of my mind, I also want to run a ship campaign because I keep returning to the ocean with my maps and stuff. Just can't stay away from it. I do live on the coast here in Oz. So uh, it comes naturally to me. Yeah, for the longest time I've had a seafaring campaign kind of cooking in my subconscious. I call these my baby bird beak barnacles. Because somehow this one looks like a baby bird beak. If you've ever seen a baby canary or something like that, or a baby finch, then you know they have these little... Um, I don't know what they're called, but they're to help mama bird aim her beak at the baby bird's face. And, I don't know, just naturally found its way into these barnacles. Giant, big old barnacles. This one's about 25 feet across, I think. Not even sure if I'll use these myself, but I'll put them in the asset pack, and you're all welcome to do with them what you choose. These barnacles might be an encounter all by themselves. <clears throat> the general idea for this encounter is that these barnacles are evil, malicious creatures, and they're growing on the back of our crab, and they're making our crab very angry. Oh, we missed a whole bunch on his claw. Uh, so the encounter isn't about killing our beautiful crab colossus. Uh, the encounter is about trying to avoid his guillotine claw while you kill the barnacles on his back. Kind of inspired by um, the Ganondorf's malice from Breath of the Wild, that the eyeballs and the gooey, oily stuff that appears around the world and inside the Forgotten Beasts. Yeah, that sort of idea. I'm very, very glad to hear that. Arnal? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, sorry. That's kind of my goal, is um, first priority, make cool maps that people can use. But even if I fail at making usable maps, at least they might inspire something cool. <clears throat> okay, that looks like all of the barnacles I can see immediately. So let's move on to other little bits and pieces. I've accidentally colored in his eye as a barnacle. Oh, I like that idea, James. In fact, on the website, we just put out an article by Garm, which is 
kind of, what would I call it? We call it a modular location. So Garm's written up this whole archipelago uh, with a theme. One of the themes is undead pirates. So in that article, we've got some undead pirates with, uh, oh, let me pull up the preview image if I can find it. Uh, okay, it's not immediately obvious on my computer. Let me grab it. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is we got some assets that would certainly support that plan. Here we go. Here's our preview image. This is a map variant by Rudy Fall in the background. And we got some ocean themed undead which would indeed pair well with this crab. I can imagine like that one faction from Warhammer, Fantasy Warhammer, with the uh, the undead pirates and the giant hermit crabs, something like that. The stage we're in now is we're just placing down kind of the base coat of all of our colors. And as we go, just giving the whole thing a bit of a tidy up. Um, this All this line art is basically untouched since I imported it. And there's a, a few significant changes I wanted to do. I'm not sure, but I think there's too much detail on his back. I want to get rid of some of it. He's a bit too consistently detailed. Like we want to abide by our big, medium, small rule. I think. Hmm. I've got lots of thoughts. There's also a few spots I forgot. Like there should be some tendons in here. Let's do that. All this line art is done on pen and paper, but I do have this specially made Photoshop brush, which is designed to mimic my fine liner. Mm. That's what I'm after, something like we have over here. Uh, was there anything else I forgot? It's been quite a, quite some time since I worked on this. Now let's just go on coloring and see what we find later. <coughs> Excuse me. Oops. I think water. I mean, my, my overlay has unfortunately hidden all my layers behind the chat, so not much use in commentating what I'm doing with my layers now. They're now very secret layers. Yeah, so this is what I was playing with. I want to simplify some areas on him. very much a mixed media kind of artist where most of the work happens on pen and paper but i i'm not shy about making edits digitally if at the end of the day i have a cool battle map or crab then i'm happy 
Like this is, I want a smooth feeling to his back here. So I'm gonna strategically remove some of these lines. And the method I have with my layers is such that I can bring these lines back if I want. They're just masked out. Uh, the nice thing about working digitally is that nothing's permanent. Although some people will tell me that makes for a lazy artist. But like I said, I'm more concerned with making cool stuff than some sort of artistic pride, I suppose. How does he look like? Yeah. We might bring some of these shapes back. Maybe this needs to be like one big chunk. Yeah, I quite like that. Quite like this shape he's got now suggests there's kind of this smooth ridge going up this end. So he's not quite so symmetrical, which I like. Uh, this crab is kind of a rock elemental first and a crab second. Um, the head cannon I'm working with right now is that he's a rock elemental. And that's why he's got this camouflage form. This is basically his unawakened state. Yeah, I like that. Let's see, we can toggle. So we've simplified his back, which is, which I'm quite happy with. Although I might bring back some of the detail. We're also going to add more detail in the coloring, so just all about once, right? Okay, let's go back to coloring. Hmm, let's call this layer, I'll call it meat. And then I'll think of something cooler later. What size do I see him as? This guy is literally off the charts in my mind. Um, he's larger than gargantuan. And the idea behind that is that uh, I'm working on a set of homebrew rules for extra large creatures that are designed to be treated as terrain as well as creatures. So this is, this is the grid. And I used to have a little demonstratory token, which let me find him again. <clears throat> so yeah, um, I'm calling them colossal, which in my mind is a size up from gargantuan. Yeah, well, we'll put him on the head here. There you go. For scale, grumpy adventurer for scale. Very much inspired by a strange mix of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Shadow of the Colossus, Attack on Titan. Uh, what else? Dragon's Dogma. Oh, here we've forgotten his meaty bits here as well. Um, there's, there's more. I've got a big list somewhere. 
the whole theme of my personal D and D campaign is around the return of the giants, and the giants aren't just you know stone giants, hill giants, etc. They're uh, kaiju, basically. That was the other influence I was trying to remember. Kaiju. Yeah, we could call this the kaiju size. Small, medium, large, huge, gargantuan, and kaiju. And you know, he'll join your Tarask and your purple worm and ancient dragons and whatnot. Your extra large creatures. Oh, Colossal was an official size in older editions. That's good to know. I think I absorbed that information from Pathfinder when I used to play that. That's why that's the terminology I've naturally been using. Yeah, we'll probably go with Colossal then. And when I release those homebrew rules, I'll kind of brand it as the return of the Colossal size class. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not against any Russian translation, it's just that I, I have very limited time to oversee such stuff, and we want to keep all of our content right now on 2-Minute Tabletop, um, and all the stuff is owned by the individual creators, so Troy and Garm write their individual adventures, and I don't want to just and over all the work that they've put hours and hours into without consulting with them. So it's on the, on the list, but it's a long list of stuff we want to do. <clears throat> I've never tried Pathfinder second edition, no. Ghost of Saltmarsh has a big old octopus. Ah, oh, I own that book. I'll have to actually read it one of these days. That'll be great reference material. That's kind of how I think of these creatures, is that they're basically like a sailing ship. What happened here? Because um, obviously your sailing ships move around during the encounter. And you've got creatures moving around on the deck of the sailing ship, and the sailing ships can take damage and whatnot. So these creatures are closer to a, a vehicle than an actual creature, in my mind. <laughs> in Brazil, it's 3.50. Well, I'm, I'm glad you stopped by. Um, don't let me keep you up, though. Maybe this chill stream is what you need to be lulled to sleep. Hey, Scott. Yeah, so these barnacles you see up here, in my head cannon, they're the true enemy of this encounter. The crab's just very grumpy that he has evil barnacles growing on his back. So, or maybe they're like psychically influencing him. But the, the encounter will be about climbing onto the back of the crab and defeating the barnacles. Because I, I grew to love the crab too much to make him the true enemy, you know. No, none of us want to see this crab get hurt, even though he has <clears throat> the capacity to probably ruin a, an adventurous day. Should I paint next? Uh... 
Um, how about secondary carapace? We're just picking some random colors to work with at this point. None of these colors are final. I mean, it just popped into my head, but these barnacles could be like mind flayers, right? They could be incredibly intelligent supervillain barnacles, and they're kind of a, a hive mind, perhaps. You could build a whole campaign around defeating the barnacle menace. The barnacles are basically possessing these kaiju, and maybe they can somehow pilot a ship. You hear tale of a ghost ship sailing the seas because it's a ship without any crew. Um, but if you were to board it and investigate, you find it's filled with these barnacles that are somehow telling it. Not sure what a barnacle would want with a ship. I suppose they naturally gather on ships, don't they? So they've got to benefit from it somehow. Brainicles. Yeah. Yeah, James, I like it. Brainicles. Yeah, and you just take illithid stat blocks and illithid what's their mother brain, I think it's called. Just take the whole illithid lore and apply it to barnacles and call it a day. We'll nuke it. Hmm. It should probably be its own surface. Eventually, I want to make this resemble like iron. You may not even use this layer, but I want to introduce a bit of, uh, what do you call it, color radiant, maybe. Yeah, so this isn't going to stay orange. I'm just working in orange so that it's nice and high contrast. But what this will be will just be a second hue that we introduce to the rock, the rocky surface, to introduce some kind of visual. Just an interesting color variation, you know? Oh yeah, and using the same brush, I also want to improve these shadows. Oh, we'll get there. That's cool, it looks like an underglow. He's standing over lava. We're definitely going to have a variant that's a magma crab, and he's like 
made of volcanic stone with magma in his fleshy bits, animating him somehow. Mmm. Yeah, Ghost of Salt Marsh sounds like it's right up my alley. And if I turn my head to the left, I could see my Ghost of Salt Marsh book on my bedside table, gathering dust. I just haven't read the full thing yet. I kind of want to follow the geometry of these rocks too. I don't know if I'll make variants for every element. Uh, the variants I'm thinking of now are the lava idea, volcanic magma crap idea, and a variant where he's a rock golem animated by crackling blue magic. So we'll replace his meaty bits with blue energy. And... Maybe we'll make something a bit more like a normal crab for the last variant. I don't know. So just like a plus size, a colossal sized crab that's made of flesh and blood or whatever a crab's made of. Now, either his head's going to be secondary color or his back end. I think back end. Yeah, I like that idea, James. My very basic implementation is just, give me a nature check. You rolled higher than 10? Yeah, those barnacles look mean, but that crab, he looks pretty cool. Yeah, what I should do is think about the surfaces here. So this um, slope might have its own color. And then we can suggest there's a, two different sorts of rocks making up his body. I'm sorry, Wessel. The previous stream got DMCA'd because I was using my Twitch friendly music provider without hooking them up to YouTube. <laughs> it slipped my mind. Um, yeah, my bad. But this one and going forward, these ones should be permanent. I can show you the map that. We worked, we've kind of finished up in that stream. I did some work on it offline as well. Last night I was procrastinating going to sleep, basically, and I started playing around with the colors. So let's see. Yeah, here it is. 
it's still in early stages. None of these colors are finalized. Immediately I see the rendering layer is just too high contrast. But here's the general idea. This is the happy tropical scene. And by the way, this is the battle map where our colossal crab kind of roams and calls home. And I also made a variant. This is a uh, this is an overcast variant where the rain's rolling in, and we've changed our sand into pools of water, which I quite liked. This is the one I made last night when I was supposed to be sleeping. Hmm. That reminds me, we need to add some of this reddish seaweed into our crab as well. He's so low contrast compared to those maps. Brighten him up so that people jumping into the stream see a happy looking crab. So I imagine as he's a rock elemental, his eyeballs are kind of these gemstones, or at least they look like gemstones. When he's in his hidden state, it's kind of like an anglerfish, right? His little gemstone eyeball lures in these adventurers, and they go up and they try to pry it out. And then, lo and behold, the giant rock structure stands up and it's got a guillotine attached. And then fun times ensue. There's going to be some work done to make this blend well with uh, that map I was just showing off. But in theory, this should blend pretty well with most maps. Okay, you're kind of getting in the way. Okay, let's do some more shadows. And to do that, we'll just temporarily hide all of that, all of that disgusting color. We've got our watercolor shadows, which I really enjoy, but uh, they're not doing all of the work that I want to get done. Uh, 
Uh, how should I go about this? Yeah, in theory, I can. Yeah. Hmm. I can just kind of deepen the shadows with this layer. This is another case of getting most of the work done on pen and paper, or in this case, watercolor and paper, but I never want to be afraid of improving it digitally. Well, that's not true. Sometimes I want to hold back. I want to resist the urge to make it perfect. Like the whole appeal of watercolor is that it's very, um, chaotic in a sense you never have full control of it or at least i don't but yeah it does its own thing i think that's half the appeal of this crab is crazy watercolor rendering. If I were to have shaded him completely digitally, all of this interesting stuff would not have happened. Not when I have the control Z button so close at hand. It's just far too tempting. But yeah, when you got no control Z button and it's you and a piece of paper and some watercolor, which is going to spread and morph in ways you can't predict. Um, kind of takes on a life of its own, you know.
Hmm. Oh, yeah, and there's this one too, which I want to keep deliberately simple. That's what helps him camouflage. That'd be roughly the amount of detail that a map has, which is a lot less than this. These barnacles just have random shading applied. Uh, random side, rather. But in theory, you can find one for the exact orientation you want. Okay. But does that help? Yeah, that helps. Thanks. <clears throat> I've got uh, I've got a chat window covering up my thumbnail view up here, so I'm going to do a lot of zooming out and looking at it. Yeah, that, that definitely helps sell the third dimension. Okay, I suppose we do want a general shade. Over here, too. We want our fluffy brush wherever I left that. Yeah, do we? Maybe this one. This one's pretty good the way it is. Just introducing a little bit of directional shadow. <clears throat> but too much directional shadow on his camouflage form is going to hurt because I wanted this to be kind of usable on any map you want. And if that map has its own shadow and this shadow is going in a different direction, it's going to stand out. Eh, I don't think it's ever going to... Perfectly camouflage, though. You're going to kind of have to expect your players to bend their disbelief, or um, what's the term? Uh, not metagame. They might see this, which is obviously an addition to the map. Maybe they've even seen the map before, and they, they know this boulder wasn't there before. But, um, yeah, they shouldn't treat it in any special way. Very temporary colors, let's all remember that. But I want to add some sand. This camouflage form has been there long enough to accumulate some sand. Do. Okay, so generally speaking, this bit sand, this bit sand, I think that should be sand. Yeah, that'll be a good start. Thanks.
Uh, yeah, James. More humorous encounters on the way. I think so. Mostly Troy and Garm just write whatever they're inspired to write at the time. Uh, the Krampus one was definitely more humorous than most. That was a, that was a lot of fun. A drop bear encounter. Oh, that reminds me of a quite an old article that Troy wrote now, which is a series of familiars, homebrew familiars that are based on Australian animals, marsupials mostly. Um, that was the companion release for my Aussie Billabong battle map. And I th think there's a drop bear in there. Let me see if I can't pull that up. Be a, be a quick job. Um, Billabong with two L's. Yeah, Ninja Sin. Um, underwater assets. Those are, those have been on the list for a while now. I'm going to get to those. In the meantime, we found that, here it is. We found that the fungi pack works pretty well as coral. Okay, let's see if this restream chat works. Okay, so looks like I went through. I, I put a, uh, I put a link in the chat and you can click that. That's our Australian Familiars pack, which is a fun one. And yeah, there is a drop bear in there. We got a drop bear stat block challenge rating two by Troy McConnell. And a bunch of cute little familiars you can use if you're a Australian themed wizard. In the same vein as the Krampus encounter, um, back in like 2016, I wrote up a Halloween themed encounter. Uh, it's system neutral though, meaning it doesn't come with any stat blocks. It just says, this guy has the ability to throw exploding pumpkins and it leaves you to figure out what the attack roll and the damage roll would be. But that's a pretty, that's a pretty fun one too. Pretty humorous one. It's about a big awakened jack-o'-lantern that accumulates all this plant matter to stand up and form this big uh, humanoid body the size of the windmill. And he's got some minions too, they've got tokens. Yeah, that's... Three-dimensional movement, that's that's a tough one. Um, we were playtesting the colossal creature rules I'm working on. And part of the encounter is climbing up the side of a giant shadow of the Colossus-inspired creature. And just that was enough three-dimensional headaches for us. But if your entire encounter is underwater in three dimensions, that's that's a whole other beast. What we do is we just keep a little digit, a little number next to our tokens that represents their elevation, right? So we play on a whiteboard, so every time someone moves in that um, 
moves up or down, we just update the, the number next to their token. And we know, oh, this guy's 30 feet up, blah, blah, blah. And then when it comes to targeting, uh, like figuring out whether or not your Eldridge Blast can reach them, we don't get into trigonometry and all that jazz. We just, we just uh, eyeball it. In most cases, unless it's like a real fringe case. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, at least, James. James Shiraman. I'm so sorry about my name pronunciations. We've got two Jameses in the chat, so now I'm forced to use last names. Um, there will be a replay of this one, at least, and in the future, I hope to stream earlier in the day, but I spent... I got my study done in the morning today, so I pushed the stream back, and... Uh, yeah, I usually prefer to stream or do my artistic hour first thing in the morning. Um, no, thanks, Jeff. Mission accomplished. You can't see it, but I'm calling this barnacle lips layer. This color is definitely going to change. Oh, I'm happy to hear it, Eric. Where, where, are you, where are you all tuning in from? Because I feel like we've got a different crowd now than the last time I asked the question. I'm curious to know if I'm talking to Aussies like myself or Europeans. I think it's, it's a reasonable time in Europe right now. Most of Europe. But yeah, it's definitely getting on in the old USA. Uh huh. Okay, okay. Well, catching the night owl crowd, I bet. Oh. Oh yeah, Ninja. Me too, up until very recently. Oh, thanks so much, James. Uh, James Edward Booth. Without Patreon, I'd still be working at a supermarket right now, and we wouldn't have nearly as many maps as we do today. So it's thanks to you and people like you that I can sit here and draw rather, rather than um, go fill shelves like I used to. Okay, okay. Shine. Yeah, now that you say that, Shyman, that makes total sense. <clears throat> yeah, maybe another time, James Shyman. Thanks for stopping by, though. I hope the replay is interesting. Definitely find some music to listen to while you're watching it. And in fact, replay would be great. You can watch it on like double speed. I think you got it figured out. Yeah, it's a it's a big, um, what do you call it? Like mutual benefit, mutually beneficial relationship. Very grateful for Patreon recently. I've been doing some 
been learning about like the cut you get from YouTube ads and Twitch subscriptions and all that stuff. And Patreon's very generous with the cut they give you. Between Patreon and the website, um, like PayPal, the, the gallery sales, it, it all comes together and allows me to do this full time. A dream come true. A bit more sand I want to paint in. Symbiotic. Yeah. I like that description. Uh, Ninjasen, um, basically I just, sounds very poetic, but I just go where the winds of inspiration take me. Uh, I do have a huge list of suggestions from the community, which I often refer to. Um, but when I look at that list, I'm not like trying to rank them by what's the most popular suggestion at any one time. No mistake here. Uh, I just look at the big list and I'm like, yeah, what am I feeling like? Because I found this took me a long time to learn, but when I draw a popular request and I just, my heart's not in it, I just do a terrible job of it. That's kind of benefits everyone if I just go where my heart takes me. And this month, it was a giant crab. Which, to be clear, was not a community request, but this was just one that I was especially hyped to draw. It's been on our, our um, on my, my personal list of want-to-draw items for some time now. Hmm... Simon, I uh, I play I get to play D and D. We aim for once a week, um, and most often it's like once a fortnight. We used to play Pathfinder for uh, what you call it, the one that was based on three point five. We used to play that, and then when fifth edition came out, we transitioned over to that, and that's pretty much all we play. It fits the bill. It's the exact kind of fantasy role-playing we want to play. Yeah, please do, uh, James Shyman. I do share... Everything that I put out is available to patrons, right? There's nothing I hold back from the patrons. They're kind of the bread and butter supporters. Uh, sometimes I forget to announce something on Patreon, but between Patreon and the front page of my website, you can keep up with everything there is. So that's definitely the best way to keep up with things. Yeah, Frank, I am an Aussie. I'm uh, working from Perth right now, basically. And yeah, Eric, I, I did quite a few commissions when I was first starting out. And I'm very grateful for the people who commissioned me back then because they were paying the bills before Patreon was paying the bills. And they... They're a large part of what got me here, but as soon as I could stop accepting commissions financially, that's I pretty much did, because commission work it is very much that way. It's uh, 
you have to summon the creative energy. You can't just follow your heart. You have to, you have to shape it. Okay, okay. We're getting to a good spot. We've got our base layers down for sure. Am I missing anything? Pretty chuffed with where it is. Maybe I do want a bit of a sheen over here. This is gonna supposed to look very metallic. Ninjessen, um, once upon a time, I couldn't draw anything at all, but if you can make time for practice, you can quite easily get to this point yourself. I don't think you need any special genetics to do it. Just <clears throat> if you've got the hardware, if you've got hands and um, blessed with reasonably fine motor skills, then you can do it too. But, you know, we've all got our passions and whatnot, so. But if drawing happens to be your passion, I believe in you. You can definitely achieve it. Okay, I'm going to do a quick and dirty one because, frankly, I've forgotten how to do sheen. So we're just going to do something yucky first, get that out the way, and then we'll figure it out from there. It can definitely needs a consistent direction, right? My shame, I don't know who Mobius is, but uh, um, inspirations. I'm actually, I'm the kind of, kind of, I don't know, insecure artist that doesn't like looking at a lot of other art because it kind of bums me out. But um, I'm definitely inspired by Legend of Zelda like Minish Cap, sort of GBA era, <clears throat> and Wind Waker. I just love the way Wind Waker looks. So subconsciously, I've probably collected a whole bunch of artistic influences. This is not working. This is not what I wanted. Um, let me look up in my other browser. I'll look up some scissors, see if we find a decent reference image. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's true, Eric. And uh, you're never going to arrive as an artist. Every now and then you lean back and you're like, wow, I've, I've come a long way. But you're never, there's no destination. It's just an endless journey, you know. Okay, what I really want instead of a highlight is something else. Uh, I got some ideas like that in Jason, but... Right now, I spend a lot of time doing admin stuff which doesn't leave me with much time for projects like that uh, but that is kind of the idea in my head is i want to dial back all the admin and social media stuff i do hopefully find someone who's better at it than i am and let them take over and that'll give me time for making classes or just drawing more would be cool. I love drawing. Yeah, but uh, to answer your question, I, I am playing with the idea of some kind of structured course because obviously these streams and the random videos I have up on YouTube, they're 
very unstructured Q and A's and FAQs and how to videos. But uh, yeah, something that can walk you through from beginner to whatever I am. Um, that would be that would be pretty cool, I think. Uh, thanks, James. Yeah, that really warms my heart. That's um, something I think all artists should aspire to, is definitely to have influences. Um, everybody does, whether you want to or not. But also to try and carve out your own artistic niche or something like that, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a pretty undeveloped thought in my mind. Not ready for sharing. Okay. See you, Timothy. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, what time do I usually stream? <laughs> That's a tough one. I'll figure that out and then I'll announce it sometime. Uh, yeah, I think for myself, a lot of my influences come from my childhood video games. And a lot of that was Zelda and colorful things like Crash Bandicoot, uh, Rayman 2, that's got a special place in my heart. Yeah, and I see those influences coming out in my D&D campaigns too, because I run a strictly homebrew setting, it's basically like fan fiction of all those things joined together. Not sure if this thing I'm working on right now, this layer is doing it for me, but it might be something I leave there overnight, and when I come back tomorrow, I can decide whether or not to keep it. Chrono Trigger, that's, I've heard so many good things about it. That was one of the ones that never came onto my radar as a kid. That's on my list now to play it as an adult. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that sometime. But yeah, I never got that authentic childhood experience of playing it. Uh, oh, thanks, James Simon. I put a lot of time and energy into trying to make layouts that make sense in that way uh dungeons that are interesting to explore and mm, and make logical sense um you'll definitely see a lot of that in the stream because i've been streaming the drafting process too where i make those decisions and there are quite long streams a lot of work goes into making layouts that make sense I don't consider myself very good at it, but... Oh, hey, it's Whiskey. Hey, Whiskey. Somehow I, I missed your text until now. I'll have to bring back Splodgy Brush someday, because I haven't used it at all recently. <laughs> Hades is also on my list. Troy's been telling me to play that. I played a tiny bit of Bastion, but I didn't get very far because I was just staying at a friend's house at the time. Rayman Legends, also on my list to play. I've only played Rayman 2 and 3 on the PlayStation 2. I don't think they're, like, critically acclaimed or anything, but... As a kid, man, I was in love with those games. Oh, hey, Matteo, thanks. Thanks for stopping by. I got to 
look away from chat for a second now and figure out what I'm going to paint next. And then I realized his leggies look a little bit unbalanced color wise. <clears throat> hmm. uh, inspiration to start two minute tabletop um i was making battle maps for my friends the game that we play privately and i well since i was in high school i've been sharing i've been doing stuff on the internet, just sharing whatever I happen to be making. It's kind of became my habit. So keeping the habit, I was making these maps for my friends and I thought, eh, I'll share them on Reddit too. And they were really well received on Reddit. So I made, at the time I made a Gumroad account, which is just like a pay what you want uh, storefront. And I was sharing them there. And then before too long, I'm like, wow, these are, people really seem to enjoy these. I'll make a, a blog and a website and a, my own platform that I'm not beholden to Gumroad or anyone else. And that's what birthed Two Minute Tabletop. And my lovely, lovely brother, Troy, came up with the name based on the Two Minute Noodles. Not sure if they're called two minute noodles in the States or elsewhere, but here in Australia, two minute noodles means instant noodles, cup noodles. So in my mind, I'm like easy to use maps that you can print out in two minutes. Yeah, that's like um, microwave noodles. That's kind of a play on words. The original draft of this crab had a, a little hole in his head intended for swords, so. And where's our, where's our guy? Yeah, he's about to do the same thing. Oh yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Something right around there. Oh yeah, we were going to add some mottling, I guess, to our seaweed. Yeah, well, let me show you this. We don't use this logo much. It's kind of Kind of a tragedy because I like it so much, but it's um our official full sized logo. And it really sells the idea. Here it is. Oh, we don't want to put it there. Although that's a pretty cool he's he's got a paint scheme now. There you go. There's our two minute tabletop logo which is going off that cup noodle idea with a little two dice in it. Oh, you bought one of the stickers? Nice. <laughs> Battle crab. There's an article idea is battle crabs. I don't know, it's, maybe that's a bit too close to like dog fighting. I don't think I want that. Um, seaweed two. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the noodles. Noodle cravings, very real.
it was a six month period where I basically survived on those noodles. And ever since those days, there's been a, a craving at the back of my mind, ready to be awakened. The slightest hint. Hmm. Wait, these aren't supposed to barnacles. These are seaweeds. Seaweed fronds. Interested to know uh, how you all came across this stream. Uh, I feel like it's an obvious answer for those of you tuning in from Facebook, but on YouTube, did you just happen to be browsing YouTube or are you here from the Discord alert or were you so kind as to ring the bell on YouTube? Because um, I, I know I have some options to set up like Twitter alerts and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, so Ninja Sin, did you find out about Two Minute Tabletop just from YouTube? Okay, not sure if it's still true, but YouTube used to like float live streams to the top of recommended back when they were pushing live streams quite heavily. So maybe, maybe there's some preferential treatment going on. Thanks, Eric. Oh, that's interesting. Of all the platforms I share my stuff, YouTube is the one I neglect the most. So it's good to know it's worth worth it, you know. Yeah, I, I've heard that that can help. I've heard that the YouTube algorithm like, even searches the chat for keywords and whatnot. So let's all let's all talk a bit about D&D or critical role or something and then we can rank for those words. Plan. Seaweed's a little more involved than I thought. Hmm. Tell me about it. Ninjasin, are you like um specifically interested in battle maps and tabletop game art? because that's kind of my forte, and I can draw some things like crabs, but outside of those realms, I'm not much of an artist, I don't think. Although I would just recommend Oro Dante. There's, a, there's an art stream that I like watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect, good stuff, Whiskey. Hopefully the AI isn't smart enough to know what we're doing. 
I cram keywords all the time. That's the reason I name my maps things like Seaside Port instead of something like the Alabaster Jetty, blah, blah, blah. Like all of my map names are completely devoid of flavor because I want Google Senpai to notice me. Right, Dungeons and Dragons. What an excellent tabletop role-playing game. Especially just such a good artistic, creative outlet. We must be ranking pretty well for crabs. I wonder if anyone's searching YouTube for crabs right now. Yeah, Pinterest, Pinterest like YouTube, it was another half-hearted social media um, uh, presence that I was going after. I'm like, eh, I might as well share to Pinterest too. I don't know how Pinterest works, but it looks easy enough. And since that day, uh, it seems we found a lot of people through Pinterest, or rather a lot of people have found us. All those arbitrary decisions along the way have really worked out. Convenient. You know, I had that concern when I first started out giving stuff away for free. Um, there's always the concern, like, am I ruining anyone by giving this stuff away for free? Like, uh, it seems like the obvious generous thing to do, but sometimes you wonder, am I accidentally, like... Back when I first started out, it was Dyson. Dyson's maps were... He was the only guy I knew of at the time, making battle maps. I was like, am I, am I hurting Dyson by sharing these for free? But these days with Patreon, there's a whole bunch of map makers making a very good living off of it. I think, I think it all worked out in the end. I mean, back when I first started putting battle maps out, I felt pretty bad asking for money. They were, they were pretty bad. Yeah, Dyson Logos, or is it Logos, I wonder? I never said it out loud. But uh, he's he does a great job, and he's like, uh, regularly publishes stuff in official Wizards of the Coast content. So I've been playing Perpetual Catch-Up with Dyson. It's this friendly rivalry that he probably knows nothing about. But I consider it's kind of the front of the pack that I'm trying to catch up to. Yeah, I'd love to publish something in a Wizards of the Coast publication. Just one time, just as like a bucket list item to say, yeah, I've done it. I've done official D&D &D stuff. 
very, very, very content just publishing stuff to Patreon, Patreon, and on my personal website. But just one commission from Wizards of the Coast, that would really, would really be nice. No, thanks, Ninjas. And as that's what I, I really enjoy map artists going after their own style and kind of um, just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Making a whole bunch of variety available for, for a dungeon master. So if they, if they want something realistic looking, they can find a map artist for that. If they want something gritty, they can find one for that. If they want something that kind of evokes Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, I guess so, or um, Wind Waker, something a little bit innocent and cartoony and vibrant, that's kind of my niche, you know. Thanks, James. Yeah, I, I kind of believe that if you're making anything, you should give people the opportunity to give you money. Because even if you don't believe in yourself, um, if you never grow out of that imposter syndrome, at least other people will appreciate it. There's, there's always there's bound to be people out there who are a fan of whatever it is you're a fan of. So if you just make something that you yourself enjoy, then there's bound to be plenty of people all over the globe who, if they could only find you, would be happy to pay for you to do it full time. I spent too long zoomed in and I'm losing sight of oh yeah we've got a whole bunch of seaweed not just his mantle yeah let's uh try not to be too perfectionist about this stuff yeah imposter syndrome will never go away because uh you're never going to be top of your field realistically there's always going to be someone else who seems unreachable seems like they've got it figured out but they're all looking at someone else which you're not even aware of thinking they don't have it figured out so it's just and you just it's just one of those things where you should enjoy the journey and forget the destination I reckon if I could show this crab to my younger self I would be pretty jazzed with the progress I've made. So, so long as that's true, so long as I'm going in the right direction, the, the destination doesn't really matter. There isn't really a destination in mind. Just make more cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, Whiskey, you're right. Um, this, every now and then, anyone who draws or does, makes any art or music or anything creative, I think knows this to be true, but every now and then you do something mostly by accident, which, which is one of the best things you've ever done, I guess. But deep down, you know, it seems like it was by accident, but it's just all that, all the work you've put in kind of accumulating into something that's kind of a breakthrough. I'm not sure if I could repeat this crab. <clears throat> like, uh, I don't think I could draw 10 awesome crabs in a row, but dang, this guy came together. Well, maybe I was possessed by some crab spirit who wanted to be remembered. I don't think we'll call it Jazz Crab, no. But I'm liking Colossal Crab. We have a Colossal Turtle already, so we can just kind of make it a set. 
Colossal Turtles kind of in a different style, but I, d I don't want like a strict style for all of our Colossal stuff anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The red seaweed shadows, yeah. This this is some um, seaweed coloration I've I've seen in real life before, and my subconscious kind of filed it away for for later. And now we're finally at the point where I'm drawing seaweed. The point in my life where I'm seaweed artist. Next colossal semi-aquatic creature. You know, in my don't tell my players this, but there's a colossal shark swimming around. Maybe I'll do a shark. In uh swimming around in my campaign, I mean. I think I'm gonna do some um I, I think I'm gonna have to do a Tarask. And dragon turtle. I don't think dragon turtles are copyrighted. Those are like, those are like real life fable, if I'm not mistaken. So Tarask and dragon turtle. Those would definitely be cool subjects. Hmm. We've we did a collaboration with a whole bunch of other map makers like that, Eric, but with a the Tarask. There's a mega dungeon that exists inside the Tarask's organs. I drew the left kidney. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love colossal creatures just the fantasy of it monster hunter and shadow of the colossus and all that and my whole campaign is like fan fiction for those games but yeah i think a tarask in this style this kind of detail level that's probably the next one i'm going to draw unless something else crops up that'll be a august project Yeah, James, exactly like that. Uh, I've got said this at the start of the, the very start of the stream, but I'm working on homebrew rules. Well, I've got homebrew rules that I'm working on formalizing into a, a bit of a handbook that we'll put on our website, and they revolve around basically playing Shadow of the Colossus in D and D. It's all about treating monsters as terrain and climbing up to find their weak point. Mostly just to bypass their resistances and whatnot. But uh, that's been the theme of my personal campaign for the last, makes like five years now. And we've developed the rules to a point where it feels fair and fun. So I want to release them soon enough. Zelda Dragon Turtle, dang. I've never seen a Dragon Turtle in 5th edition. I, I just remember them from Pathfinder. But yeah, more Elder the better in my opinion. Uh, Ninja Sin, are you 
aware of our token editor because we actually have thousands of tokens now. They're just, they're not on the website gallery. They're in their own token editor section. Kraken, that's another good one. Yeah. Oh, is that the next book, Whiskey? The Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, there shouldn't be a bot to stop you, Whiskey. You can try. And if it doesn't work, let me know and I'll post it. We have a Tarask in the token editor. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> You're right. That's that's quite an old one now. Yeah, David and Austin, they're just non-stop. And uh, knowing you're running out of subjects, so just going to be tokens for years. Wow. I remember when we um, released the token editor publicly, I'm like, wow, we've got over a thousand tokens total. And now David's got 1000 tokens all by himself. That's huge. But yeah, we're talking about 2,000 tokens now, so I can't remember what we have. I don't even see all the ones that get released. It's just a constant stream. But yeah, if, if you need something for your game, just plug it into that search bar and you'll probably find something. Yeah, where where's our where's our little token here? That's not a token. That's our logo. But um this little fella here, this is one of David Wilson's tokens on the token editor. So if you like his style, uh made specifically to play nicely with the battle maps, um there's a thousand and one more like it. So please enjoy. Whiskey, of course, well, I don't know why I said of course, but Whiskey, for those who don't know, is our developer for the token editor. So it's thanks to Whiskey that we have this new token editor with a, with a search bar and with all these other tags and other features, opacity controls. So it's a big group effort between Whiskey and Hammer the Shark and David Wilson. You can thank those three for these, what, 2,700-ish tokens. An amazing project. Hmm. Where are we? Maybe we need a strip. We haven't even hit the save button in a while. Do that.
Okay, let's hit save. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to be right back in about two to five minutes. Might make some tea. Okay, I'll be right back, everyone.
Hello, hello. Yeah, ninjas, and I had to boil the kettle the whole way, so it took way longer than I thought. <laughs> Table tablet. I'll have to do a couple of variations of the crab, so we have... You know, crabs that could show up in any old environment. That'll help. Uh, I was supposed to think when I stood up, I was supposed to think about what I'm going to paint next, but I did not do that. Now I'm a bit lost. I think I want to paint a bit of a shadow on him. I'm going to do an ugly black shadow first. Quick and dirty, while we figure it out. Uh, question I have, if I do it like this, is if he rotates, the shadow is probably not going to make much sense. Actually, it still makes sense. Mostly, yeah. Okay, yeah, that does it. I'll catch you later, whiskey. Have a good one. There's crabs in Dark Souls 3. See, Dark Souls is another game franchise which I have yet to get into. One that I think I'm going to be a huge fan of just as soon as I play it. I want to see these Dark Souls 3 crabs. Swamp variation is definitely doable. Okay, yeah. Man, this is pretty... Perfect fan art for such a crab. It's just about the same scale, too. So what makes these crabs special? They got like a dark coloration and they got swamp flavored foliage on their back. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be a simple edit. Yeah, please, James Simon, thanks for stopping by. And there'll be plenty more streams in the future, so you can stop by then. Uh, have a good sleep and a good work shift tomorrow. My uh, my one friend is a big fan of Dark Souls, and he wants to try out being a dungeon master. 
trying to convince him just to run us a dungeon master sorry just to run us a dark souls fan game because the rest of uh the rest of us players i don't think we've played any dark souls so he could quite easily just pass it off as his own thing Yeah, it seems like some kick-ass reference material. I played a little bit of Sekiro. That's the only from... Is it FromSoft? Am I thinking of the right company? It's the only Dark Souls-esque game that I've played. Didn't get very far. I'm going to set up this tablet of mine with some hotkeys and whatnot, some shortcuts for changing the brush size. Taking a long press to do it. No. I know exactly what you're talking about, Eric. Um, that often happens to me as well. It's one of those instances where you never really arrive. You're always just getting perpetually better, I guess. Or hopefully you are. For me, a lot of my oldest maps now look unfinished to me because I've learnt a lot of techniques since then that I would add to them if I were to draw them today. But back then, it was exactly like you said, like <clears throat> those maps were finished because that was the extent of my knowledge back then. Since that day, I've added a lot of tools to my repertoire. Like this, this undershadow, I very nearly forgot to do this, and I do forget to do this on a lot of maps. Like the Krampus, the Krampus in Count Assets, he doesn't have any undershadow, and that was, I drew him last December. So uh, I, I still run the risk of forgetting important stuff like this. Grim Hollows books. Okay, he might like that. <clears throat> I think this scale of creature definitely needs that under shadow in order to sell that he's got some elevation to him, like you're cresting a minor mountain by climbing up this guy. And um, shadows get blurrier the further they are from their source. So his shadows should be fairly blurry. That helps kind of sell that he's a big old beast. Yeah, Stone Talus, David. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's exactly that idea, yeah. Um, this I was talking earlier about how his little eyeball gem here should lure players up here to try and pry it out. Really foolish players, but nonetheless. Uh, that's the exact same concept as a Stone Talus, isn't it? 
And imagine waking up to someone trying to pry your eyeball out. Man, I'd be angry too. I don't know why I've been using the soft blurry brush so much when this one does the trick so well. This kind of rendering I learned from Oro Dante, which is another YouTuber, artist, art, artist, art YouTuber. I highly recommend. In fact, some of the brushes I'm using are from his set. So uh, for those of you, there's lots of people that ask for my brushes and I, I'm i like, yeah, they're not really my brushes. You'll have to go find them over here. But yeah. Orodante, you can check him out for just general digital art. Tips and tricks, good stuff. Oh, Dragon Bridge and Blackspin map, man, those are some old ones. Yeah, you're all, you've really been around since the start then, in Jason. Okay, I think these shadows are pretty good. I really stopped to figure out where the light's coming from. I just, I want a very neutral light source so that you can rotate him around on the battle map and plug him into most battle maps without ruining the whole lighting. So he's just got this vague under shadow, but it does help sell the, sell the idea that he's holding his claws up in a fighting pose. Hmm. Oh, I like that idea, Eric, like a, an underdark variant of this crab. He lives in the depths of the planet. We can change these barnacles into mushrooms. Maybe he's made of mushroom. This kind of looks like a mushroom, right? With um, different textures on it. Giant mushroom crab. Oh. Now I feel like the red areas We've kind of raised the standard of rendering on this guy, so now I need to go back and improve certain aspects of it.
Okay, I've got this idea that maybe this red bit, kind of like the softer, fleshier part of him. So maybe on these inside edges is where that will be. I don't think it'll stay red until the end. It's just a working color. Yeah, this is also going to help us sell his third dimension. How does that look? Okay, I think it should be strongest on these edges, but also I like this gradient as well. A bit of both. Thought I made some tea. Mm -hmm. You know what he needs to is like a sheen. <clears throat> We may not use it in his basic variant, but I'm thinking of a variant where he's been eating a whole bunch of iron ore and his shell is mostly made of iron and has a metallic sheen to it. I didn't have much luck with the sheen over here yet. But we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> Oops, on my brush control. Yeah, we have a rock crab, a jazz crab, and a metal crab. Okay, I like what I've done mostly by accident here, where this secondary color it's kind of in the cracks and the ridges, like a bit of oxidization or something.
Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. It's like I said before, all the cool stuff happens by accident. Oh yeah, I like that. That's a very dwarf fortress idea, which I approve of. You know what I feel like sometimes is a, I feel like a miniature wall, uh, what's it called? Yeah, like a, a figurine painter, like for a Warhammer and whatnot. A lot of these techniques I found are very similar. I've been watching some miniature painting YouTube channels and I've actually learned a lot that I can apply to my map painting process from those. Yeah, I like that. A good one, David. Uh, I'm going to have to settle on just a few ideas for him and then save the rest for future colossal creatures. Uh, like I, I want to do some colossal beetles too, because I just love beetles. I was a big bug nerd when I was a kid. And, um, big old beetles in the same kind of style as this crab would be really kick ass, I think. And they'd make for good forest guardians. Yeah, I'm really liking how this secondary color is what it's adding to our crab. Uh, when we pick some slightly different colors, it's going to look especially cool. In fact, should I brighten them up a bit now? This work in progress color scheme it reminds me of like oxidization. Bit of rust. Beetles, giant beetles, one of those things that's been on my to-do list, my personal to-do list, the one that nobody's requesting, but I want to draw anyway. They've been on that list for a long time. Like, um, I want to do like circus beetles, like a, a circus group. And they haul all of their circus equipment around using beetles, giant beetles, as oxen. And the beetles will have these very circus-themed color schemes as well. And I'm thinking gnomes run the whole affair. We'll just go full-on comedic. The Beetle Gnome Circus. Yeah, you know, you've just reminded me, Ninjasen, of um, the crab cult in Kenshi, the video game. And I love me some Kenshi. They have a faction that's uh, that worship kind of post-apocalyptic crabs. Those are really cool. Yeah, not druids, but uh, definitely religious in a sense. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah, I know I have to do a magma crab just as a little homage to Dwarf Fortress. Magma crab definitely happening. Yeah, those those crab cultists would go wild about this crab. <laughs> I like that, Eric. <clears throat> this one's certainly large enough for a hut on his back. Like his back section here is one, two, three, four, five. You could call it six by six almost, which is big enough to fit one of my buildings, building maps on it. I have a witch's hut. Yeah, we could just dump the witch's hut on his back. Hey, Wilton Geist. Welcome to the chat. I think I missed something. Yeah. Oh, some more updates for Kenshi, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm i subscribed to the, the newsletter, and they're often... Well, not often, but every now and then they share something from Kenshi 2, which they're mm -hmm. working on. I'm super hyped for Kenshi number 2. Yeah, exactly like that, except uh, I don't think Baba Yaga Hut has a giant guillotine hand, so if I were a witch, I'd opt for the crab. Uh -huh. Let's all remember to hit that save button once in a while. So, you know, what just crossed my mind is all of this rendering is going to be pretty useful, perhaps. We want to make like a hmm, variant that's just stepped out of the water and he's covered in like a sheen, a watery sheen. We'll see. We'll see later. Hey, Matthew. Turrets and laser beams. Yeah, it sounds like an asset pack I need to do. We've definitely got some siege weapons you could strap to his back. Turrets and laser beams. Yeah, why haven't I got to that sooner? I could rip the turrets off of our one spaceship map. I could see this crab being... Instead of a boulder on the beach, you could camouflage as a meteorite. Crab from space, right? One night, a star falls from the sky. I even have a battle map for that. 
And when your players go to investigate, it's the incursion of the crab people. They're falling from the sky like Transformers in that first Transformers movie. Maybe that's the crab is the spaceship by which our brainicles, barnacles, um, traverse the cosmos. He's been genetically engineered to have the guillotine hand. Guillotine hand is kind of a remnant from when he was a uh, golem summoned by a orcish witch doctor. That was kind of the first... Um, that was the first uh, idea for this map. And we've moved on pretty far from that idea, but the guillotine hand has stuck around. <laughs> I got a map for that. Yeah, Comet Crab. I got a, a map that's called Glowing Crater. It's a giant crater. And there's a mysterious glow coming from within. Be the perfect battleground for a space crab. One paladin, in, mm, the one player in my home game plays a paladin, and his uh, powers originate from a shooting star that fell to the ground, and now his order of paladins use chunks of that star um, stamped into the back of their hand as the source of their powers. And maybe... This crab is the true form of their god. Would definitely be a surprise for him. He's expecting some kind of griffin. A lot of the iconography revolves around griffins, but uh, I could surprise him with a giant crab for sure. I think he'd dig it. All right. Yeah. Crab log. Yes, yes it is. Oh yeah, I was talking about doing a shiny layer on him. Okay. Um Start with this. 
This is a little bit too bright. <laughs> we don't have space for all these variations. Now we have to we have to save some of them for the next colossal creature. The only way. Oh, I was using never mind. Um, so Eric asks what size I usually start with canvases. <clears throat> For me, it's a question of dots per inch DPI because I draw everything uh, with the purpose of them being easy to print out. So let me see if I can explain this. I'll just start talking and see if it makes sense at the end. So I, I start with 300 dots per inch, which is kind of the industry standard for printing out posters, uh, AKA way more than enough for battle maps. Um, and once you decided to go with 300 DPI, you just do a simple calculation and say, I want a battle map of 22 inches like I want the grid size to be 22 by 16. And you just multiply that by 300 and you have your, you have your canvas size. And it's pretty easy in Photoshop. Not sure if I can show you this dialogue, probably not. But uh, this canvas I'm working on is 300 DPI and it's 22 by 14 inches, meaning in pixels, it's 300 times those figures, which is 6,600 by 4,200. Pretty big, yeah. Uh, 300 DPI. A DPI is just one of those things where the, the more the better, because you can always downsize it, but it's a whole other affair to upsize it. So I just, I just go with the upper end of what my computer can handle. But if you're just making stuff for virtual tabletops, their standard dots per inch is 70. So if this canvas were 70 DPI, it would only be 1500 by 1000 pixels. So yeah, it depends on the on where you want your map to end up, you know. That sounds pretty cool, Felix. Yeah, David, I'm hoping to create something like that. Uh, like I said, my whole personal game revolves around colossal creatures. So that's the exact kind of thing I've been working on in my off time. Just uh, I just have to sit down and write it out.
uh, the rules, that is, and then make art for it too. Yeah, I like what all these layers are doing together. Yeah, so, so Eric, what I'd suggest if you're just playing on virtual tabletops is to look up the standard DPI for that virtual tabletop and then use that as a guide. But you can pretty much forget about pixels and just measure it in inches with the DPI setting and that'll do the trick. As a safe bet for virtual tabletops, just do 150 DPI, which is half of this canvas. And it'll still look pretty darn good if you were to print it out. And it would be more than enough for virtual tabletops. So yeah, I'd probably I'd probably suggest 150 as a rule of thumb. <laughs> That's I love hearing that, David. Thanks. City streets map. I'm not actually sure which map you're talking about. City streets. Oh, it's the one I just put out like last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the town center. I think I called it. Yeah, it must be that one. <laughs> nice. I've yet to play on that one, but I'm excited to, because I think it'll be, I think it's a really solid map to run an encounter on. Like it's got the rooftops to play around with. It's got some alleyways. Um. And it's got kind of a central battlefield. It's got all all the components of a good battle map, in my opinion. Okay, we're gonna have to disable our Bella for a second. Thanks, Dean. Really happy with how this grab's coming up. Uh, Ninja Sin, Ninja Sin. Um, the 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 Patreon stuff is basically. Hold on, I'm not sure I can put this thought together while I'm painting. Head's a bit bright. Um, yeah, what was I trying to say? It probably helps to think of the patron stuff as a subscription for future content. Patreon, I keep saying patron. And the everything pack is by far the most convenient way to download and catch up on all the previous content.
Hey, this, this is this is okay. Yeah. Wonder if we just make this into a general shadow. Yeah, there you go. He looks just rocky. We can do a mundane crab with this same layer. An iron crab would look something like this. Yeah, I'll try not to get too distracted. Um, hmm. Let me catch up on chat for a second. Hmm. Whoa, I just realized my webcam's super dark. Uh, must have accidentally turned off auto brightness. Give me a second. I mean, the sun is going down. Didn't realize that until just now. Uh, a little better. Just leave it on auto. That's good enough. Not sure what the purpose of this webcam is. Uh, I. It reminds me of like speedrunners, and they have their controller in frame to prove that they're playing the game properly. I think it's useful for people who just stumble upon the stream and they're like, "Is this guy FK or not?" And they can see my hands doing something. It's also useful if I forget I'm streaming and I type in a password, you can steal my identity. All sorts of good, good stuff. Uh, okay, okay. Now that we've added so much detail, I feel like our seaweed needs some attention. <laughs> Warforged Iron Crab. I like that idea. Yeah, Eric, it's like that for me. I don't usually draw late into the night because for me at least that's time I take off to, uh, I don't know, catch up on Loki or things like that. But uh, when it comes to the sun going down, I often look up and notice, oh, the, my, I'm sitting in complete darkness and the sun's gone. Yeah, this is all we need. This is the right amount of detail. The real problem for me is losing track of time. And then I realize, oh, my uh, neck is killing me. I haven't moved in two hours. So I have to set like a kitchen timer or something to remind me to get up and stretch. <laughs> oh, thank you, Eric. Yeah, I've been taking a few sips, but it's already getting cold. Yeah, can we get Loki Season 2 tomorrow, please?
Yeah, I know. That's that's what I need. I used to have like a little auto hotkey script that would send me a notification every half hour. But I don't think that migrated to this computer. I lost it at some point. Uh, David, that your patron pledge will be for each piece of content I release in a month. So four times a month. Um, so set your pledge according to that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That said, you can use the monthly maximum setting, which means you can opt to just pay once a month for the first release I make in a month and nothing else. That's completely above board. And thanks, by the way, just for considering it. Uh, thanks to Patreon and my website. I don't have to bother about monetizing these streams at all, so I don't have to worry about ads or... I don't know, how else do people monetize streams? Hot tubs? Don't have to worry about any of those things, I just... Turn the camera on and start drawing and call it a day. Yeah, I can kind of relate to you, Ninjasen. I had a, a bit of a trampoline accident when I was a kid. And since then, my neck's just the most sensitive part of my body. I have to take care of my neck. Uh, so this tablet you see here is one such thing I bought to help that because I used to draw on a on a surface so the screen and the drawing surface were one but I'd have to crane my neck down to look at it and you can get options which will lift it up on like an easel and whatnot but for me this setup is nice because it's like using a mouse I just get my elbow in the right ergonomic position and um as long as I move around once an hour, it doesn't hurt me at all. Yeah, Eric, I've kind of gone backwards compared to what most people do. I started with a Wacom tablet, a really nice one. And then I progressed from there to a Microsoft Surface because I wanted a portable computer. I was doing a lot of traveling back before the pandemic. Um, and since then, I've progressed or regressed to this little Wacom thing. But it works well for, for me. Maybe like the larger size would be better for fine details, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not, not all that fussy. <laughs> I really appreciate it, David. I mean, all of it and the patron Patreon included is just pay what you want, basically. Lots and lots of people will never pay me a dime, but uh, that's okay because there's also lots and lots of people who um, who are willing to. So it balances out. I mean, I've got um, 
six years, I think, six years experience now drawing, specializing in fantasy battle maps. I don't think a lot of people on this planet can claim that. It's uh, certainly a niche. So if you want to leave it to the so-called experts, you're more than welcome to. If any viewers are multitasking right now and also working in Photoshop, this is your reminder to press the save button. I only remember that now once every uh, 15 minutes. And it's often, often caused me some strife. There's, a, there's this consistent issue with my Photoshop where if I use the square marquee tool, it crashes. It crashes 100% of the time if I alt tab while I have something selected with it and it crashes at random as well. So I just stay away from the square marquee tool, but occasionally I forget and I use it and I lose half an hour's work. It's painful. <laughs> Thanks, David. Mission accomplished. We have a monopoly on whatever this style is. I think Photoshop probably has an auto save as well. I should look into that. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm trying to move away from Photoshop and use uh, Corel Studio Paint some more. I just don't really like Adobe's business model. But uh, Photoshop's what I know, so it's it's a tough transition to make. Uh, Ninja Aston, I I did go get some tertiary education in fine art and in digital art. Uh, that's that's in fact where I learned how to use Photoshop. But I definitely say that it's not required, like. You can quite easily be a self-taught artist just just using YouTube. YouTube teaches. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd probably do much better than than the education I got. Uh it wasn't useless, but like I definitely the most important ingredient is just practice. You'll hear that anywhere. You just gotta put your reps in. Thanks, the flow state. So I think next step is to introduce this red oxidization to our camouflaged crab. Uh, maybe one day I can I can make a how to draw series. Maybe, maybe it'll definitely be very much focused on fantasy battle maps. I mean, I kind of started the process already on YouTube. I have a playlist. If I do teach anyone, it'll be 
it'll be like a one size fits all kind of video guide, I guess. I, I definitely don't want to like take on a an apprentice or anything like that. That's not my style. But yeah, I mean, I kind of started making tutorials and stuff on YouTube. Those are still useful in my opinion. And my style's kind of changed since those days. Mm. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm just starting with general fluffy cloudy rendering, and then we'll switch brush and do our more detailed stuff. Honestly speaking, like these streams are the best way to learn what I know, because what I know isn't isn't a whole lot and you're going to learn it. You're going to pick it up pretty quick if you watch these streams. And then after that, it's just a matter of practice. Hold on. Yeah, the sort of guide I want to make is how to make maps using map assets, which is a much more, um, what's the word, much more attainable for anyone, you know. Um, we have folks in our Discord community who have tremors, which kind of keep them from drawing but they can still make maps using map assets. So that's that's the angle I want to take with uh, whatever guides I'm going to make. This is how to make maps using the building blocks that I've been building for the last few years. I'm getting Windows error sound effects, and I'm not sure why. Um, I've played Minecraft. I haven't played it recently. I played, man, I, I played one of the first alphas to come out. And I was pretty darn hooked. Uh, dang, which, which update? Before the Ender Dragon was a thing, before there was any story mode. That's when I used to play with my friends. We used to just build stuff. Back when I was young enough to be afraid of zombies and creepers, like I was trembling when it came to nighttime. This was before bed, so you just had to hide away in a hole somewhere and listen to them outside. And I was young enough then to imagine them kind of doubt whether the fact that they can't break the door down is true or not. Yeah, I was legitimately terrified of Minecraft back then. Okay, we wanted to kind of mirror this one in a small way. Yeah, texture packs for Minecraft. I could, in another life, I could see myself doing that, definitely. I used to make, I used to make sprites for Dwarf Fortress, tile, tile packs, tile sets. What else? I used to make tile sets for Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, another roguelike. And for Unreal World RPG, that's a very cool Finnish roguelike. Um, I made quite a few tile sets and texture packs in my day. What else? What else? 
else. Basically, before I found D and D, before I knew what D and D was, which I only discovered when I was nineteen years old. Before that day, I used to pour a lot of time into making texture packs and tile sets for games that I liked, mm. and making games too. Like that was the old pipe dream was to be a game designer. But uh, then I found D and D, and I found. And this is exactly what I've been looking for. This is the sort of creative outlet that I've been longing for, where I can make any old thing I want, and it's going to be useful to someone. I can draw a giant crab, and somebody's going to use it in a game at home. No, I haven't heard of Streets of Rogue. I used to really be into roguelikes, but uh, that was a few years ago now, so I'm not up to date if it's a new one. Like, uh, the, some of the tiles I made for Unreal World RPG made it into the official version, but nobody, nobody ever asked me if they could add it to the official version. They just quietly tucked them in. So I don't I don't have any plans on hunting them down and <clears throat> asking for compensation, but it's just it's a funny piece of trivia. This is this kind of looking like the same creature. We we haven't done the we haven't done the highlights yet. I'm just looking for the distribution basically. Rave crab, I think it's based on this. I think rave crab is one of those big clawed crabs, isn't it? So that's probably the resemblance. Same reference material. Oh. Streets of Rogue. So what uh, kind of setting is that? That sounds like a modern day setting. Now I gotta remember not to make this disguised version of our crab too detailed, because it's gotta blend in with my relatively low detail maps. So I gotta I gotta chill out on these details. We may have put too much into the seaweed already. <laughs> Filled with giant crabs, okay, I'm sold. I think that's why I got into Kenshi so much, is because it's basically a three-dimensional roguelike, and I really, really like the, wor the world building as well. Hm. I don't think I have any donation streams enabled on my streams. Um, but if anyone wants to donate, please do it through Patreon or on my website, because YouTube and Twitch, it takes such a large cut. I, I don't want to make anyone do that. I'd much rather you just do it, do it with PayPal or whatever. But yeah, let me know if I've accidentally left anything like that enabled. <clears throat> I just recently learned, apparently in the description of this, this stream, there's a big restream advertisement. I need to figure out how to turn that off. I've already paid them some money, I don't think I should be advertising for them. Oh, well, that sounds intriguing, David. Yeah.
Okay, I think that'll do for our reddening. Thanks, Mark. Mustn't forget our bird beak brainicles as well. Hold up. I'm doing this highlighting thing backwards. Uh, Ninjasen, David's actually made a token sized version of this crab already which I'd recommend if you want just a medium-sized version. Uh, you could theoretically scale this guy down to token size, but he's going to be very detailed next to other two-minute tabletop tokens. And we've got a... we don't have any colossal-sized goats low state, but we do have goats in abundance on our token editor. Uh, if you go to the website 2 tabletopcom it flashes on the stream every now and then. Uh, you'll find a big link to the token editor where you can find tokens for just about anything, thanks to David and Hammer the Shark, our dedicated token artists. But Colossal Goat, I'll keep that idea in the Back of my mind. Yeah, we're still very far off doing everything. Um, we're still working on basic player races, in fact. There's just so many tokens to be made, we're never going to run out of subject matter. And if we do ever run out, then we'll move on to something... We'll move on to a new art style, like uh, David's already... He's been drawing kind of isometric perspective tokens for a long time. And now he's drawing some more that are strictly top down. Same tokens, but distinctly different art styles. So, yeah, we'll never, never run out. Anyway, uh, crab. His head glow. To Mm. Do want it to be pretty discreet. Yeah, like I keep saying it, but this asset has to blend with the battle maps. So we we can't go too wild. I have not made a creeper. No, I I believe that's copyrighted. I don't think we're allowed to make a creeper. Okay, uh, let's jump over to our barnacles. I think we can use the same... Let's use the same. Same layers to render these guys. I wonder what I want to do with them. Hmm. Just highlights, I think. I'm assuming you mean a creeper from Minecraft, yeah. Those are those are very copyrighted. 
trademarked or whatever. Uh, if you mean like a creeping vine, or like someone who hides behind a bush, uh, those are probably fair game. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, David. Uh, I'm the same. I'm not fussy at all about my tokens. I just use the one that looks the coolest. But uh, the top-down ones, some people are like top-down purists and they love top-down tokens and they don't want to use anything else, which I completely understand. They are very uh, convenient for rotating and using with facing rules. Um... And certain creatures just look cooler from a top-down perspective. Like Hammer the Shark's done some top-down dragons, which are probably my favorite dragon tokens, period. Because from a top-down perspective, you can see their tail in its full extent. You can see their wings expanded, all of their spine. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's that's the idea with the token editors. We're just gonna perpetually make more and more tokens in different art styles if we ever run out. And you'll surely be able to find what you're looking for, wherever you are. Could totally see these attached to this crab. Um, I was thinking about using this color as fading. In fact, I was thinking about using it just for the beak. I think that'll work better. I can really see these barnacles as villains. Like, doesn't this little smile just look villainous? He's been scheming for a while now. And this one, this one's just sadistic. Giving it a bit of an underbite. This is the big bruiser barnacle. We've got a whole thieves guild of barnacles here. This is the muscle. This one casts magic. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my eyes get hurt. Low state. I just got a... Um, I just got to be mindful about it. Um, try and take a break every half an hour. Um, blink your eyes, stretch, roll your shoulders, blah, blah, blah. 
there's some good routines you can learn on YouTube for it. I mean, you just have to, it's like an office job, right? And uh, office workers have been perfecting the ergonomics of working at a computer for hours for a long time now, so I just follow their lead. How are we looking? I'm thinking... He's got a lot of rendering on his arm that isn't present on his body. Yeah, I also suffer from headaches. So it's, that's the trick, I think. The, the best advice is just to be aware of it and to take the necessary steps to avoid it. <clears throat> uh, I was talking about it earlier in the stream, like set a kitchen timer so that every 20 minutes you stop and you do some neck stretches and I don't know, some jumping jacks if you want. Yeah, know what you mean, Eric. I mean, a lot of them might not turn out well, but uh, usually doing a whole bunch is better than trying to do one perfect one. So I'd say you're on the right street. Yeah, I don't want such a directional shadow on him. I want general shadow. Ambient sort of shadow. Okay, have a good one, Flow State. <laughs> yeah, ninjas. <laughs> when I was drawing, when I was drafting this guy and figuring out what shape he was going to be and what he's going to look like, um, I was very mindfully staying away from the Moana crab design. <laughs> At one point, he looked quite similar, but we managed to dodge that bullet. But he's still similar enough that if that's what you want, you can certainly make it work. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just a coffee sort of day, coughing sort of day. Um, what was I saying? We're definitely approaching the end of the stream. I think what we'll do is try and take all of this work we've done and slap on some colors that look good. I mean, this does look good, but we can certainly do better. That, I mean, treasure on his back would be a good lure if he is in the business of eating adventurers. This layer. Ah, it was a temporary one. Yeah, so it's approaching 6 p.m. here, which is dinner time, and then I've got some other uh, habits and chores I want to take care of. So we're going to wrap this guy up for the day over the next 10 minutes. I'm going to save him, duplicate him. And 
see what we can do with his color scheme. Just wondering if we want to bring in a bit of a C and backdrop. Maybe this one. I don't know, maybe that's going to throw off our color grading. Yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately, his final color scheme is going to be determined by our other battle map, which I haven't finalized yet. Just loading it in now. This one this is his haunt, his feeding ground. So the rock color, base coat rock color will be drawn out of this battle map. But I'm not satisfied with this color scheme yet, so... So we'll see. So yeah, all, all, all I'm looking to do is give him a pleasant color scheme so that next time we start up the stream, there's something nice to look at. Wow, you cannot see my webcam. That helps. Yeah, that helps a lot. Forgot I had that light. Oh, pass and monocle variant. I think I understand that reference. Um, no, what we'll do, we'll do volcanic rock variant, not magma crab variant, just volcanic rock. Um, Editing the barnacles, which will which will be the basic idea for that beach map I just showed off. A bit of a bit of a greenish rock. We'll come back to his guillotine claw. Just love this rusty red. But uh, though it may be the final coloration for this layer, uh, for this particular variant, I want to try something more down to earth. Is this dialogue window visible on the stream? It's not. I'm just using the color picker and I'm changing my solid color layers in order to change its color. Yeah, he's starting to look very rocky. And he's got his muscle fibers poking through. And they should definitely be much darker. These gaps, um, the final version of these gaps ended up being a whole lot more significant than in the first draft. Like, I never expected them to be big enough for a man to fall inside and be crushed. 
Like, what a way to go. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that works. If you get a critical hit or something, you just describe it as striking those weak points. Yeah, sure, flow state, you're welcome to. Um, try and give you a, a decent view. That should do. Yeah, something a bit, a little bit purplish. Isn't um, crab flesh like white? Maybe I should be looking around here. Or is it only white when it's cooked? I don't know anything about crabs. But this looks natural to me. <clears throat> it's a toss up between this kind of meat and like this kind of meat. And I really don't want to Google what the inside of a crab looks like. I'll just go rule of cool for now. I think this looks better in terms of a color scheme. Okay, anyway, uh, getting a little ahead of myself. I should worry about the rendering layers first. Yeah, that's a good point, David. Like, biologically, I suppose it makes more sense. Biomechanically. Would this be useful as an underglow? The answer is probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we get to our magma crab variant, this could be could be our play. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Whoa, have I had the watercolor layer disabled this whole time? Man, I feel like a doofus. Yeah, take your screenshot now. Um This is this is the better crab. <laughs> I have accidentally disabled his rendering most of the stream. I like this greenish blue shadow. But it needs to be maybe closer to blue. Like my goal when rendering is to get a bit of a hue shift between the highlight and the shadow. So we're going from a yellowish gray through a kind of greenish neutral gray through to a quite a blue shadow. And um yeah, just never be monotonous, and you'll probably do quite well. I suppose this seaweed is alive. It's deliberately clinging to his back so we're gonna have a nice lively green although when we push it into this color range that's pretty cool starting to look like a canary or something starting to think it's like a mating ritual he's deliberately planting the seaweed on his back Yeah, just a little bit muted, though.
<laughs> yeah, I like peacock feathers. And you know, these barnacles, they've kind of evolved to blend in with our crabs, so um, they'd probably adopt a similar color scheme. Oh, that looks interesting. Still not final color scheme, of course. So we can do anything we want. Uh, the last thing, I quite like his yellow eyes, right? They could be any color under the sun, but, oh, I mean, that is pretty cool. In the final version, if we go with that friendly crab evil barnacle idea, we want we want a happy color for his eyes, an innocent kind of color. And I think yellow's the play. Um, cyan tells me magic, in my opinion. And then I guess green could work. Green's kind of cute. Yeah, but for now, I'll, I'll hang on to the, the yellow. <clears throat> now, I, what I want to do is we have a very desaturated shadow over the whole thing, and I want to separate that from our seaweed. So that we can give our seaweed its own shadow, which is going to be more vibrant. Oh, well, that was interesting. If I duplicate that, that's pretty... Eh. <laughs> High contrast, huh? Yeah, never mind. Anyway, we were doing seaweed shadow. So this is the old seaweed shadow color, but I've isolated it now and we can give it any color we want. So I'll give it kind of an autumn color scheme. But, um, eh, it's not quite there. Striking. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Now that we've paid some mind to the overall color scheme, still got to do is claw. Where did I put that layer? 
I called it secondary. Let's call it claw. And then this layer is just called sharp. I need to organize these better. But one of my uh, brush strokes snuck in and just by pure chance, it's doing the trick of making it look shiny. I'm telling you, all, all my best decisions are purely accidental. Don't, don't tell anyone though. I like the idea, uh, I suppose his quote unquote sharp bit is going to be darker. Dangerous. Also give him like a funky color. Like uh, especially, I, mean, I keep imagining him as a, a male crab who's got to attract a mate, right? So this can probably have some kind of vibrant flair on him. I do love yellow and gray as a color scheme. It's uh, probably a bit much though. Also, in his hidden form, does he just bury all this? Does he bury his claw? I suppose so. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Eric. It's been fun, and I hope you enjoy your. Um, Leisure time and get a good sleep. I'm thinking similar red to his flesh. Oh. And it's blood red, so it when it's covered in blood, he doesn't look unkempt. Nature be crazy like that. Okay, yeah. Uh cool. cool. There was something else on my mind. What was it? Ah, oh, I wanted to just road test what it looks like when we change this again back to red. Cool, in my opinion. We want rusty red, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is good. This is good. This is iron crab. He's made of iron and he's a little bit rusty. Hmm. This is the... Th mm, hold on, hold on. Although I suppose... Somehow, maybe with his mandibles, he's sharpened his claw to a iron guillotine. And a shiny, shiny new iron will be something more like up here. <laughs> yeah, the crabs have those designations like dragons do. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay, that's probably good enough. So here's kind of a intelligent, uh, here's, here's our original crab after we've put some time and effort into his colors. Nice. 
Maybe our psychic barnacles should be a classic psychic color. Maybe that's a little bit too on the nose that they're gonna do something nefarious to the players. Eh, it'll do for now. Yeah, did I make any major changes between these that I want to undo? No, I think we'll overwrite. We'll overwrite our old crab with the new crab, and we'll move forward with this one. Yeah, I can do a little better still with the iron coloration. Feeling like somewhere around here. Thanks, Mess. Yeah, it's just a rule. If you have psychic powers, you you have to display them as purple coloration somewhere on your body. Uh, we, I think we made him a bit too muted with that color change. We'll keep him like this um, as a final adjustment. Why I lose my voice? His shadow should be... not black <clears throat> the exception of the line art i don't use black for anything uh, we need a little bit of blue snuck in it's always interesting to look at it without the line art too Kind of thinking this might be cool. Doesn't he look crisp? Definitely more volcanic now. Don't know why, but these patterns kind of like uh, polished marble, maybe. Yeah, I'll keep that in my back pocket, but we'll keep him like this for now. I'm going to rename some of my layers so that future me has an easy time navigating. Meat. It's not really meat, it's a um, muscle fiber. With an ER. What would I call this layer? This is stone highlights, I suppose. And then kind of stone shadow and also, yeah, I'll call it stone shadow, it's close enough. Oh yeah, and sand. Uh, I don't know where I imagine this crab being. This this definitely isn't our beach crab. Beach crab will have a different color scheme. So this might be volcanic crab. And in which case, he doesn't have sand on him. He has ash. Sure. Barnacle lips, yep, that's pretty apt. Or edge. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, um, I haven't saved this one at all, so let's save it. Yeah, I think he looks unsuspecting. Like a, a metagamer might see this gem and think, oh, that's very strange. But I think anyone playing in the spirit of the game, uh, this would be a healthy level of unsuspecting. I, I mean, uh, an in-universe character might think that gem is very strange as well but as an artist i look at it and i'm like hmm that gem which is obscured by this rock face that's very strange that means this whole asset is one piece that's a very large addition to the map that sort of many gaming would be uh not the best Yeah, his shell would be large enough to live inside. You can kind of see the grid much better now. That's his scale. There's our, our little giant killer. Yeah, okay. I've saved him. Uh, he's looking good. And we'll resume this in a future stream. Um... But before I, I could, I could make adjustments until midnight. So I gotta call it quits now. That'll do. I'll get some food in me. Uh, so big thank you. I see we have nineteen viewers right now, which is a, a record for this year. Thanks everyone who stopped by and everyone who is in the chat, um, helping me conceptualize this big crab. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, Felix, I'm sure I'll do many streams earlier in my day and later in my day. I don't have a very strict schedule, so uh, I think at some point in the future I'll be able to tune in again. It has been fun, though, and I'll, I'll catch you all again sometime in the future. Uh, thanks again, and have a good one.